and for the developing athletes as well that are listening in, um, what would be some some uh, habits that you get excited about when you're taking on a new athlete and they're, and they're already starting uh, to do some things? Yeah, look, um, rule number one for me taking on a new athlete, I, I use the term I got to look at them through childlike eyes, right? It's not let your own confirmation bias creep in from other athletes. And in a sport like baseball, it's really – we're a school-based sport, but there's a – like there's an art to pitching a baseball and there's there's a science to it as well. And so uh, 50% of the roster in baseball is pitchers. So they're the predominance of the athlete type that I work with. Yeah. And, if, and sometimes I'll have pitching coaches come to me and say, well, um, he should do this, he should do that. And I'm real sensitive to this word should because should is based upon a set of measures or markers or values that somebody else is putting putting in place, right? Um, Who are some other strong influences that have helped shape your career, like mentors? Oh, uh, man, definitely influence. I'll, I'll give you some names off the top of my head. So Dr. Marcus Elliott, who runs a uh, lab out of Santa Barbara called P3. Um, Marcus was kind of shunned out of baseball. When I met him, he was the only scientific mind I found in the game of baseball. Does some phenomenal work. Is now in charge of the NBA Combine. Does an incredible musculoskeletal assessment on athletes and with the data sets that he has can I'll never say anyone can predict injury but boy he can show risk of injury probably better than anybody else so definitely him with p3 um uh, Alex McKechnie who's an assistant coach with the Toronto Raptors learned so much from him this is a guy that cured Shaquille O'Neal's kind of back and oblique injuries uh when he was with the Lakers and went to the Raptors and through reduction of injury, drove them to an NBA title a year or two ago. He's working with an athlete who is on the verge of making the Australian women's team. She's extremely fast and powerful, hits well and great in the outfield. Um, and then he's gone on to say she's still quite young and feels this could be one of the factors holding her back from making the Aussie team. What do you think could get to get noticed by more selectors? What, what could she do, I guess, to get noticed by... Um, more selectors, uh, and then his, his last part of it. Are there any specific exercises you would also re recommend when programming for baseball athletes? Hitting great in baseball at the level at the major league level that I work at means two things. It means ball exit velocity, how hard that baseball is being hit, how fast it comes off the bat, yep. which is kind of an indication of all the physical systems from visual, cognitive kind of knowing where that ball is going to be and squaring it up all the way down through creating the right axis planes and having no leaks in the kinematic energy that creates that exit velocity of the baseball. That's yep. one. Launch angle is another one everyone talks about because if you have the right launch angle and you hit the ball hard, well, it's going out of the park or it's getting into a gap, it's getting above the fielders, right? So key performance indicators, tying those to the physical systems of the athlete is step one. So those are the two factors we look at for a hitter. So um, favorite inspirational quote or life motto? Wow. Yeah, after coffee, everything else makes sense. <laughs> there you go, Mel Burney. And <laughs> yeah, I'm no good before coffee. And I read that the other day. I was like, yeah, everything else does make sense after coffee. Yeah, on that, do you think like, you know, how there'll be weekly reviews, monthly reviews, half season, end of season? Like what's your take on, on reviews? Yeah, it depends. Um, depends who's doing the review. <laughs> it depends yeah. on how they're measuring things, right? So, and this this was a quote I actually picked up uh, at an MIT Sloan conference. I was fortunate to be backstage in an event that President Obama at the time was in, and he made this comment. I'll never forget it. And he made this made this comment. He was telling a story about something he said during a one of the crisis um, situations he was dealing with. He said, "Look, he goes, you're entitled to your opinion." What you're not entitled to are your own facts. Entitled to your own opinion, not entitled to your own facts. So when people are doing reviews, I think it's incumbent upon the strength and conditioning coach to say, hey, you know what? If someone says he's out of shape or they're like this, well, that's your opinion. Let's go to the data. What does the data say? And if your work is supporting those data changes, it shuts up every conversation. It's fact. You cannot argue the numbers. So... I would say from a, do I like reviews? As long as you have the opportunity to prevent, present facts, I think they're phenomenal. 
Uh, in your work, what makes you angry, i.e. pet peeves? Yeah, exactly the coaching staff we talked about that have opinions that aren't based on fact. And, and look, I, <clears throat> I try to always, you know, if you point the finger, you've got three pointing right back at you, right? The very first thing I have to do is always, and I think this comes from, from age and time as well, step back and understand, you know, why is somebody making a comment that may not be based upon fact? Um, and pull them aside and try to try to understand, try to be, you know, you have to be psychologists sometimes and understand, is that coming from a place of fear? Where is it coming from? Generally in, in elite sports it is because guess what? You lose that job. There's only one way you're going and that's down, right? Yeah. You know, you've been a strength coach under the bright lights of the NFL and NBA, Major League Baseball, and then boom, now you're down in, uh, you're working at 24-hour fitness as a personal trainer trying to make ends meet, right? I mean, I get so that fear is kind of innate 